<laughs> All right, it's Saturday, February 17th. Um, let's orally confirm that the participants have reviewed their permission form. Yes, I have. Yes. I have. yes. All right. Uh, it is signed. Yep. Yes. And granted their permission. So. Yes. All right. Um, all right. Let's do this. First, I would like to collect some background data about you two. Please help me complete these items. So, father, what is your age? In years? 55. 55. How would you describe your race or ethnicity? So, Anglo, Caucasian? Caucasian. Okay. Are you married or in a committed relationship with the mother? Mother. Yes. Married. Married. <laughs> yeah. So, which terms describes your relationship with the daughter? Biological father, adoptive, or stepfather? <laughs> Biological, as far as I know. <laughs> I haven't been on Mori Kovic yet. Am I about to yet. learn something? <laughs> I haven't been on Mori Kovic yet, so we're not 100% sure. Uh, so <laughs> how many children do you have in total? Two. Two? Um, two daughters. Two daughters. Okay. Um, where does Kat place in the birth of your children? Is she the first child? She's the first child. First child. First born. All right, moving on. The daughter, uh, what is your age? I'm 26. 26. How would you describe your race or ethnicity? Caucasian. How do you identify your gender? Female. <laughs> Don't you mean? <laughs> Has your gender identification ever changed, yes or no? No. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on to the first section here. Cool. Um, so I'll start with the father and then we'll go with Kat. And then, so, first question, please describe your earliest positive memory of each other. Earliest positive memory, well, when, when Kat was born, that was a pretty positive moment. Mm -hmm. So that's, Can you I say guess that? The, Does that count? Well, Damn. I mean, my memory of you being born is like totally cool. positive. Even though I wanted a son, you're the son I never had, so. <laughs> and my little boy. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Father, tell me a bit about you and your family situation. Is it different now than in the past? How? In my family, well, yeah, every family evolves over the years, so uh, it's different than when she was born, obviously, but uh, as far as the family unit, not much has changed, you know, we're as far as I know, as far as I'm concerned, it's all good. Uh, relationships, fine. Um, like every marriage or whatever, you go through ups and downs, but we're in a good spot. All of us, I think. That's good to hear. Mm -hmm. Question number three. Do you think your relationship is similar or different from other father-offspring relationships? How? Wow. Uh, I would have to say yes, as far as my and Kat's relationship are, as far as I'm concerned, based in, you know, when kids are young, they don't always hear the truth. But at a young age, uh, Kat was always hearing the truth from me. Uh, our relationship is way different than most father-daughter relationships because of her athletic uh, career in swimming and stuff. We were together a lot going to and from practices and uh, spending hours and hours together from eight years of age until uh, she graduated college basically. Uh, well, I should say that until before she went to college. We spent many, many hours a day uh, together. Uh, and even before eight, uh, we spent a lot of time together being in a family unit. So. Hmm. So we spent a lot of time together and our relationship is based on uh, athletics more than anything, but everything in general. Mm -hmm. So would you say the family athletics kind of emerged within the family theme? Yeah, the whole family. My, my younger daughter also was an athlete and, until basically right before the end of high school. Mm -hmm. So we were doing, you know... It sounds like a classic thing, running kids to and from practice, but it was a little bit more 
in our situation because Kat was swimming internationally and my other daughter was competing at a high level, so we would spend a lot of weekends on the road with them. Hmm. Sweet. Thank yeah. you for sharing. So Kat, we're basically going to ask you the same thing. So question number one, please describe your earliest memory or earliest positive memory of each other. Earliest positive. Um, back in the day before I swam, I played soccer and um, this was like early elementary school ages and stuff and my dad and I, we first bonded I'd say over that sport, just you know learning from him. He played soccer back in his day so like looking up to him and learning that kind of stuff was always cool and just being in that really cool, I mean elementary school especially here in Arizona, like, I would say it's pretty interactive, like, we'd have all sorts of, like, show and tell days, and, like, bring your family in and do this kind of stuff, so, with us being close, you know, through the sport of soccer, um, he was always around in school and stuff, too, which was cool, like, we had a cool show and tell day, I remember, back in, like, first grade, mm -hmm. and he, uh, back then used to drive the semi-trucks like that's what he did for a living yeah. and he brought his big old semi-truck to the school and like that was my show and tell thing and, like all the kids got a tour of the little trailer and stuff. You're the cool kid of the class. I was the cool <laughs> kid, yeah. No, so it was cool like we had, it, back then times were so fun like just being young and learning like you know I really liked soccer and just like learning things about me and playing and always having fun with friends. Um, that was probably the earliest you know, positive memories. Great. <laughs> uh, question two. Tell me a bit about you and your family situation. Is it different now than in the past? How? Um, I'd say it's different now. Um, as my dad mentioned, like, you know, every family does evolve. But I think more than anything, the um, evolving is through, like, me and my sister being younger and like growing up and realizing like maturing uh realizing certain things that we didn't realize before through adulthood and i think that sort of dynamic and like realizations shape how the family is now i think obviously we were closer when we were younger because it was easier you know like we're not as busy and there's more time for family time and the things that bring us together are always like fun and eventful and um I don't know, they're just very, like, young and fun, but, like, now, whenever we're, we're meeting up or trying to make time for each other, it's the holidays or it's for yeah. some sort of bigger event that, you know, is shaping the next, like, transition in the future. So, in that sense, it is different because I think we don't sometimes take enough time to do more of that, like, fun, lighthearted stuff, mm -hmm. and it's more just, like, when our family gets together, it's for these, like bigger things but other than that like he mentioned our like family relationship is good by by pretty good standards I, I wouldn't say like we're in the rough spot or anything good so last question Kat do you think your relationship is similar or different from other father-daughter relationships how um it's hard to say I think in some aspects it is similar I think about other kind of athletic, you know, athletes and their relationship between father, daughter, and I'd assume it's, you know, similar in terms of, like, the support systems and the expectations there, but I would say, as my dad kind of mentioned earlier too, he's always been very honest with me, and I think in a westernized culture of athletics, it's hard to come across these days, like, you get a lot of parents who are babying their kids or like, oh, you know, no matter what, everything was really good, but he always kept it real with me. So I always knew, you know, when I was doing well, when I wasn't, held me accountable and it taught me a lot of different things. So I think in our relationship now, having grown up that way and like having that shaped, you know, me from the past, I think now we've been able to keep that consistency of keeping it real. So it's just always a very raw, open relationship. Absolutely. So and that's unique. Yeah, because I want to add a personal anecdote. When we were training together, you'd always be honest. You'd always be yeah. real and truthful. And some people that might, like you mentioned, in a westernized culture, mm -hmm. might rub them the wrong way. But definitely, I took that as with a grain of salt and yeah. um, took that in a positive manner. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you for sharing. So, we're going we're gonna to move on to the relationship turning points, as I talked about. 
um, I got something to read to you guys so you can better understand the turning points assignment. All right. <clears throat> so relationship turning points are important and memorable changes in the closeness of a relationship. These are times in the whole history of the parenting relationship when one of you, one or both of you, remember feeling closer or more distant from each other. Turning points can involve positive or negative changes in your relationship. Some involve specific life events and others cover long periods of time. So for this part of the interview, I'm going to ask you to think about your relationship from its very beginning to the current moment. Uh, we're going to use this timeline, so you have that timeline there, um, to make a list of the turning points in your relationship. Uh, as you can see, the bottom of the timeline depicts the age of of uh, the dog cat from birth until now. The left side of the graph measures the amount of closeness you felt at that time between the two of you. It can range from zero, which is no closeness, to 100%, which is as close as you could possibly be. The midpoint at 50% is the average amount of closeness you have felt in your, in your relationship. So, you know, you guys can take a few minutes, take a few seconds to think about your whole relationship and the times it has become um, become or less close. There are no right or wrong answers. These are just your own memories and feelings about your relationship and it's possible that you two or you two of you have different memories. So yeah whenever dad whenever you're ready. <laughs> now where you want to start. Um, I'll, I'll ask the final question. Turning point. I don't know what a turning point is. I don't know that we've had any major you know, turning points in our relationship. It's good and it's been good for, you know, the entirety of our relationship. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a little bit different with my other daughter. <laughs> we go up and down more, but with Kat, it's been pretty consistent, you know, consistent and, and well. Uh, Can we uh, speak about that consistency? Why do you think it was so consistent? Why? Uh, when you spend a lot of time together with somebody, it's uh, it's a uh, it's a situation where even when you do have little peaks and valleys along the way, they kind of are leveled out because you're always together. It's sort of I don't know how to describe it to you to make it sense to you in your swimming community, your swimming team, or wherever you've been, that, that's something you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. If I'm trying to tell you what it is. You have arguments and not arguments with your swim teams. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're still friends. So how much of a shift is there? Unless it's a monumental shift with somebody where you don't get along with, and then boom, but then you don't have a relationship. When you're with a father-daughter, in my situation, a husband-wife, you have your high points and low points as you're going along, but it's never too high or too low. You go to bed, not in an argument at night, kind mm -hmm. of thing. So um, that's why I don't feel that we've had too many huge ups and downs. Obviously, the upper moments in your relationship are, you know, your daughter's first day of school or or her graduation from eighth, ninth grade, or her, her successes. Mm -hmm. You share in your her her uh, moments of pain you share in as a parent, especially when you're close. Yeah, okay. So those are kind of moments that you kind of like try to find, you know, up and down. Uh, so how about this? Because we're, you know, kind of having a, a hard time grasping that, because mm -hmm. believe me, if I was sitting right there with my dad, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't know what to say either. So how about yeah. this? I'll, I'll just ask you, what helps me is kind of having the conversation, I'll just ask you a few questions. So. Sure. How about this? You guys mentioned that uh, growing up, you guys had different relationships because you're real, you're honest with each other. At what age did that start? That started basically with her athletic career. Probably like uh, around ten, huh? Uh, nine, even earlier, nine, eight, nine, nine. Yeah, eight, nine years of age. Yeah. Okay. You want to speak about that first? Yeah. I mean, was that a positive experience or was that a negative because you kind of have to instill well, that in me? Yeah, I didn't have to instill. I mean, I was honest with her. How honest she was with me, she knows. I don't, and I assume she was. 
It's a perspective thing, isn't it? I think, like, yeah, speak on your behalf of... Yeah, my behalf, I... Trying to teach you know, I, I grew up and everybody was always honest with me. I grew up in the era of coaches being... And this is within more soccer? Of, whether it's soccer, whether it's athletics, or whether it was football. I played football so in high school, uh, baseball in high school, soccer, uh, and stuff like that. I was always having coaches that were disciplinarians. The Bobby mm -hmm. Knights of the world, if you know who Bobby Knight yeah. is. Yeah. Or that, that's my, uh, my coaches. So I learned to respect that, and to this day I respect that. And so their thing was always being straight up. Mm -hmm. uh, couple that with today's world of, of everybody gets a trophy. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm like I did. I never agreed with that. I, I think failure is savior. Okay. Yeah. There we go. How about that? The whole trophy aspect. Mm -hmm. Is there a moment where maybe Cat had a soccer tournament and you know they're handing out all these medals or trophies and you're just like, no, like <laughs> you're not. You're not gonna have that. Was there ever a conversation like that? Mm, no, I don't think we ever had it. I had a conversation once where I felt the kids were too young, uh, my younger daughter, and it was getting to the point where they were doing, they had a little tournament of three on three. I can't remember even how old you guys were. You must have been. Young, like seven. Oh, even younger than that. I'm thinking five or six she was, and you were six or seven. Eh, maybe, maybe like that. And they had some soccer tournament where it was three on three. They had four people per team and her younger daughter was with, them. my younger daughter was playing with Kat. And they got to the quote unquote championship game and it was tied after the end and then they played some kind of overtime and then it was still tied at that point and then they decided they are gonna do penalty kicks from half of the field and these kids, you could see, were under just immense pressure not to screw it up. It wasn't about winning, it was about not screwing it up. And at that point, I approached the other coach and the organizer of the thing, and I told him, I go, dude, listen, let's call this a tie. Whether you want to give trophies out to them both or not. I mean, these kids, one of these teams is going to go home a loser, but worse, one of the kids is going to go home devastated that he missed the shot to cost them the game. And so, luckily, he saw it the way I saw it, and, and you know, we stopped it there. I can't remember if everybody got a trophy or not at that point, but... I think we did. But that was the situation where everybody got a trophy, but not the kind that I'm talking about, the participation trophies where they don't keep score, where they, you know, I think you need to keep score. And that really bothered Kath, and she found her sport of swimming, which was ideal mm. because it was a it was a team effort to train, but it was on you how you perform. What you put in is what you which get you out. get out, yeah, yeah. sort of thing. And so there, there was no more playing on a team of eleven kids or eight kids or whatever it was back then. And then you're not winning and you feel horrible, even though it wasn't your fault, type of thing. Mm. So somehow her destiny was to be a swimmer, and that's nice and easy. There is no judging. There is no. Uh, style points. It's a clock. When you get out that block, you go to the other side, turn around, and come back. Uh, especially in freestyle, there's no rules. Mm -hmm. Go there and come back, and whoever's the fastest wins. There's no style points. There's nobody. It's on you. Everything. There's no and judge. That was perfect for her. Uh, and then couple that with when she would have a bad race. Sometimes they would come up. Her coaches would come up with some lame excuses to. You know, oh, that was a good effort, or this, and I would just straight up say that was horrible. Hmm. Uh, and that's the way it is, you know, yeah. call it like it is. And that that part of our relationship was always good. My wife would always say, great job to her, and I would tell my wife, don't tell her a great job. Well, it isn't a great job when she stunk it up or something, mm -hmm. right? She knows better than you whether she did a good job or not. You just need to be honest with her. And comfort her, say there's next time next time or whatever but not lying to the kid that never goes anywhere in any relationship yeah if you want to take anything out of this whole communication thing be honest as mm -hmm. honest as you can absolutely so all right then i'm going to ask you just follow-up questions because that was a lot there mm -hmm. um so the earliest 
turning point that you remember is when Cat was about seven or eight, and we're gonna so we're gonna have to give that turning point a name, kind of like a caption, okay. uh, kind of like you know, divorce, big trip. So I'm gonna name that, and this is with your yes sure. or no. Um, we're gonna name that three versus three tournament yeah. okay. because sure. I feel like with that kind of you know incorporates the reason why she started swimming. Mm -hmm. And that was age seven, that you said? Yeah, I say seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna call it 3v3 tournament. Um, so we're gonna plot down the turning point graph. And so, she was seven. Okay, so second, this is the most important one. How close was the relationship at the time of that turning point on a zero to 100% scale? Because there was a... Is this for both of us to answer? No, this is just... Okay. Yeah, because you may have like a different experience that you want to talk about. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can talk about the same.